on everybody this is when men up opened up a show where we are redefining manhood through transparency my name is Dominique Bond I'm Dexter Pagan and the topic for today is boys and molestation yeah and this is a very very sensitive topic a very very serious topic of um, a conversation that needs to be had um, in, in so many different areas but this is a conversation that we tend to neglect for several different reasons and and because of that uh, boys tend to be vulnerable in a lot of situations but before we go any further man uh, we do have a special guest with us um, Dex you want to go ahead and um, introduce him man? Well listen hey uh, a friend and uh, definitely a friend to the show want to introduce my good brother Mark and I'm gonna let you Mark uh, introduce yourself to the audience tell them a little about yourself and what you do. Glad to be here man uh, uh, as Dominique uh, had alluded to in his intro saying that this is a topic that a lot of times uh, we, we shy away from. And knowing that I had gone through some things, I, I opened up the Dex and told him, said, man, I'd like to be on you and Dominique's show. So he told me to come aboard. I'm glad to be here. I'm Mark Jenkins. Uh, I'm the owner of my studio, which is in transition to become Impact Media Group uh, downtown Augusta. I'm involved in ministry, and uh, I attend Chosen Church, where I'm the media director. And I'm just glad to be with you guys, man. We appreciate you um, for having us and, and, and joining our show and, and being transparent because this is not, it's not always easy to share your story and so forth and, and kind of expose yourself and, and, and share um, some things that have happened to you and what, um, something that you experienced. But, um, you know, we really want to get in a lot of different areas when it comes down to this. So yeah. we're gonna ask them some questions. We're gonna converse about a few things as well. But, um, you know, I want to go ahead and get right into it, you know. Let's do uh, it, so I, I want, you know, tell some more about, I guess, your upbringing and, and, and how you was raised and so forth. I, I had uh, what, what a lot of people would consider the ideal upbringing. On the outside, it appeared that way anyhow, you know. <laughs> but uh, some of you all are closer to my age. I'm 54 years old. Uh, and you know more so in the black families, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And so I was sort of raised up under that tutelage. And uh, while things were going on, uh, you know, whatever was going on in the house, we kept in the house. I uh, had a nice home up on the hill. Uh, didn't have my father there, uh, but my mother was, you know, she was well employed. She retired uh, 32 years from the Army and Air Force Exchange Service, uh, directorship and uh, all that type of thing. Had all of my needs and a lot of my wants. But uh, I had some dark secrets going on in the house, man. And you know, uh, didn't know how to approach it. Came up in the church. Uh, <laughs> I see you backed up on no, that. No. Came up in the church, man. And uh, uh, you know, I, I was uh, exposed to godliness. I was exposed to God. And uh, I knew the way. Uh, but it's just some things that were instilled in me as a kid that kept me from, I guess, coming forward and confronting some of the issues that were going on in my life at that time. And, and, I, and I like that you brought that up because that's some of the things that we like to discuss. Um, we just had a workshop um, or a, a presentation with a lot of young men, I think about almost 100 young men, and we wanted to discuss a lot of things that we typically don't want to discuss for various reasons, whether we think it's taboo, we just think it's weak, it's soft, or whatever the case may be. Get, go more in depth with you know what was instilled in you that influence you to say, okay, maybe this is not something I need to be sharing or going more in depth in that makes sense. Yeah, it, it was pretty much, I mean, just cut to the chase. It was just an old school way of upbringing. You know, you don't share what goes on in this house, mm -hmm. outside of the house. Mm -hmm. Now, as a kid, I, I really didn't know how to filter that or process that. So when things that were going on with me mm -hmm. that I should have been, you know, vocal about, I still kept mm -hmm. it to myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I paid for it. You know, later in life, I paid for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because we actually did a show called uh, What Happens in the House Stays in the House. Okay, uh, cool. And, and one of the things is is that, you know, that is often expressed because you're ashamed of what takes place or essentially you don't want anybody in, in your business, you yeah. know. And so, you know, a lot of times, you know, if, if that message isn't con conveyed correctly, you assume it means something else. All the way around. Yeah, yeah. you know, and so, uh, you know, with that being said, you know, I, I'm curious, you know, and, you know, for you to open up about 
you know what the the gist of what we're talking about okay. today, yeah. which is you know molestation. If, if you don't mind, can you share uh, the actual experience and, and what happened? And and for those those of you that just tuning in and you're wondering what we're discussing today, the topic for today is boys and molestation, and we're just having a conversation about. Um, boys and molestation. We also have our guest Mark Jenkins, who is sharing some things about his story and so forth. So uh, we appreciate you for jo um, joining us, and please share the broadcast if you can. Yeah, uh, and I'm just gonna be straight and raw, man. That's that's yeah, the only way I know. Fine. I mean, I you know some people try to dress things up, be mm -hmm. politically correct, and but I'm gonna just be straight forward because I, I believe that's where we can get most of our help from. Yeah. Uh, but in my household. Um, there was a, a female relative who was molesting me. Uh, she's six or seven years older than me. And, you know, some people look at me now, so well, six or seven years isn't a big age difference. But when you're five or six, seven years old, it is, it is a big age difference. Uh, didn't, really didn't know how to handle it, you know. Uh, it was just some things that were going on I sort of kept to myself. But I also knew that whenever I would be, uh, we would be at friends' home or, you know, just be in the company of this female relative, man, I just sort of despised her. You know, I, I despised, I detested her, detested being around her. But in the back of my head, you know, whatever goes on in this house stays in this house. And, you know, being a young boy, I didn't know that that was something that I should have been running with. You know, yeah. this is what's going on, this is what's happening, and uh, I didn't. And because of that, uh, I went later on in life, you know, because you, you never talk about it, you're ashamed, and uh, it just breeded a lot of anger in me. Mm -hmm. it, it, it breeded a lot of anger, man. I was an angry young man, very so, angry. So, it, it, it happened when you was how old, five or six? I probably started when I was five or six and went on until I was about 12. Wow, Yeah. wow, so it happened for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that was the same relative? Same relative, same okay. relative, yes. So she was probably around, what, 12 or 13 when? Yeah, when it started, and then like when it, you know, the the, the ending of it probably was, um, she might have been 18, 19 or something like that, and I might have been 12 or 13 years old, somewhere around there, right. you know. So, so let me ask you this, because you, you mentioned that uh, you didn't know where to turn to, so am I right to assume that you didn't, did you share it with your, your mom? Or? I didn't share it with anybody. I mean, it, it was, I didn't share it with anybody. Uh, not to say that I thought this was something that was supposed to happen because I, 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 you know, in the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't supposed to happen. That's why I detested her mm -hmm. when we would be out places and we'd be visit, visiting the home of friends, you know, we'd be over there. And I'm just looking at her like, I hate you, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I never shared it with anybody. Uh, I, I, I never confronted the issue that I've been sexually molested until I was a grown man. I'm 54 now. I think I made the confrontation of the issue when I was 42, man. Yeah. Wow. And how did that come about? Uh, just hearing other people talk about it. And uh, uh, I was in a situation around some guys, you know. Uh, they were just talking about it. They, it was around some programs. And uh, guys were talking about having been sexually molested and having been this. And I would just listen. And the, the thing about it is I was listening still as if it had never happened to me. Right. You know, I'm just listening like an outsider. I'm yeah. still in denial. I'm still in, you know, I've shelved this thing, and I'm just listening. The more and more I was around these guys in this specific program, it was a domestic violence program, uh, I said, man, you know, something's going on here with me, and I, I need to talk about it. I need to confront it. And like I said, I was about 42 years old, man, and uh, I confronted it. And I was, I was around this domestic violence program because of my anger issues. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Okay. See, that makes me think about, and, and I think I told you about this, Dex, and I talked to some other people about it. Um, there was a time where it just really clicked to me, and I just started thinking back to when I was in middle school and in high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, guys always talk. You know, I, when, when guys you talk about, you know, them, you know, having sex with this person and, and, and so forth, you know, we didn't really believe it. Sometimes we didn't believe it, sometimes we did believe it. But you had some of these guys that said, you know, um, oh, you know, I did um, X, Y, and Z with this 21-year-old, um, this 27-year-old, and so forth. And if I really think back from middle school to high school, there's like 10 guys that I can probably think of. You yeah. know, I probably didn't know, know them like that, but I remember them really stating it. You know, if it was true, that it really dawned on me like these guys, 
were molested, these guys were raped. You get what I'm saying? And it's just, it's amazing to me because I feel like boys, because we think of boys are, um, this can't happen to boys. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, boys can really, or can defend themselves or, um, or even um, a woman or a girl can't do this, wouldn't do this. They're more vulnerable. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? How were you vulnerable in those, in that, that's a long time span. I mean, I think you said from five, six to... To the age of about 12, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's a long time. Mm-hmm. So how were you vulnerable from, from that time span? Like, what was, what were some things that, that your parents could have done differently, your family could have done differently? Why were you vulnerable in those situations? Uh, I think my, my parent could have been more approachable. And, and, you know, in the defense of my mother, a uh, Christian woman, uh, doing all that she knew to do. Uh, but most of her life, man, was like work. She was in management just about all of my life. So 12 hour work days in church. Mm. So, you know, uh, I didn't think my mother was approachable. Mm. That makes sense. You know, you just oh, don't okay. think. And then, you know, I'm acting out. Uh, you know, of course, I started acting out in school. And then, you know, the church members would come over, boy, you need Jesus. <laughs> and, you know, that made me angry, yeah. you know, because uh, the underlying issues were not being addressed. Uh, as an adult, I can look back on that and say, you know, well, you know, they're talking about I need Jesus. Yeah, I did need mm-hmm. Jesus, but I needed some love and attention and, you know, somebody to talk to, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I and I just really didn't have anybody. I mean, what, what you have in schools today, you know, like if something's amiss, you can go to a counselor. I'm pretty sure that may have been there back in, you know, the 70s, you know. Uh, but I wasn't aware of it. Early 80s, I wasn't aware of that, man. You know, you know, we we did a show, you know, along these same lines a couple of weeks ago uh, called AJ Number the Number. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things we talked about, I, I guess, the older you are in your adolescence, maybe you know, teenagers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Much of what Dominique was talking about, uh, you know, having sex is. You know, that's the pat on the back. You know, that's the open, yeah. you know, uh, you know, accolade, you know, the, to right say to that. Yeah, yeah, you know, to say, yeah, I'm out there, you know, having sex. But, you know, you, you were exposed to it at five or six. So I guess my question is, what did it look like as far as the introduction? How, were you coerced into it? Because, you know, I, and I was joking with Dominique that, uh, you know, I remember when I was 17, this older woman was like, uh, well, I could teach you some stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and I told her, look, I ain't trying to learn, you know, yeah. but the, but the reality is, is that, you know, a, a lot of, you know, in these instances, when, when young boys are introduced to sex, the coercion or the method is, hey, you know, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to make you more experienced for, you know, your future girlfriend or your wife or whatever, but when you're five, you know, you're not thinking about no, sex you no. know I got two young sons you know they're thinking about playing video games so. I, I, I'll say this Dexter and like I told you I'm gonna keep mm-hmm. it real because of this and I, I mean it can only be because of this you know what was done to me I can recall being in kindergarten around that age mm-hmm. kindergarten first grade and um, I can recall you know nap time mm-hmm. lying on the mat And because of what was going on in my life, I can actually remember, man, lying on the mat, waiting on the teacher to walk by in her dress so I can look up her dress. Mm. I'm talking about six years old, Mm. five years old. Mm. I can remember that. I'm 54 now. Yeah. I can remember that, man. Yeah. I can remember that. Uh, You know, you were talking about how does it affect a person. Mm. It does. I can remember, um, I can remember being in school drawing a picture, a stick man. And then drawing, you know, nasty stuff on a stick man. Mm. And it was, you know, I didn't know that. I mean, they raised sad about it at school, man. But I didn't know. But see, I'd been exposed to this type of thing. And uh, I just didn't know that there was a way out. I'd been brainwashed into what I told you from the onset. What goes on in this house stays in this house. And uh, you just live it, man. You just live it. And, you know, I think uh, if if we took... 50 parents, and we asked them, you know, when is the ideal age to talk about sexuality or mm-hmm. sex? And I'm pretty sure that many of them, they would choose an age that's early in middle school. Yeah, okay. You get what I'm saying? 
And with my background with the youth, I think that's totally wrong. I think that's totally late. And I think part of that is um, what a lot of parents say is, I want to keep their innocence. Mm -hmm. Or they're saying, you know what, um, they're probably not going to understand. I always, I, I'm a firm believer that when it comes down to a child's understanding, it's your responsibility to make sure they have an understanding. And if you cannot break it down, you find someone else that can break it down. Working with five, six, and seven-year-olds, what you just stated, you know what I'm saying, I've seen that. And not only have I seen it, but I've also seen the way young girls look at me and how they view me. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So when people, I think a lot of people, um, there's a lot of miseducation uh, of, you know, that even though that's, this is a child, they still have those feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may not be to the same degree as us, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. adults, you know, but they still have those feelings. Victor, you can, um, um, push that real quick. They still have those feelings. So with that being said, I think we have to really be mindful of that because now we'll have the understanding that, okay, we need to have the conversation of good touch, bad touch. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to have a conversation of, uh, you know, this is how you respond in these situations. We need to have a conversation about sexuality and sex so they know that if I'm having whatever feelings, it's okay to mm -hmm. have to, the, the conversation. Yeah. Do I even know how? There were certain mm -hmm. things, not not let you go. Um, there were some things I remember experiencing, and I didn't. I had a feeling, but I didn't know how to express it. Yeah. And because no one really talked to me about whatever, mm -hmm. I didn't. I don't know where to really start or to begin. You that's get it, what I'm saying? I, you so know, that's that's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I mean, because I'm actually that parent, you know, you and I talked about this before, where I was kind of hoping that I could, you know, have a grace period around maybe 10, yeah. 11, you know, 12 to... It's not know, easy to talk. But, but, it's, but it's too late, you know, and I, I even told you that when I had that discussion with my son uh, when he was eight, you know, which was probably too late, or well, it was on the later end of the, the spectrum now, but... Uh, it was awkward then, you know, but the the reality is it was a necessary conversation. It was necessary because uh, whether we like it or not, you know, they are being exposed to stuff early. And the fact that they're being exposed to stuff early uh, is nothing new. You know, even in your case, you know, you're talking about, you know, some almost 50 years ago, you know, this was your experience. So, I mean, I would be curious to, to ask you, you know, what... What do you feel like uh, your attitude towards maybe women and relationships uh, were after this exposure? Okay, um, let, let me back up oh, just a little bit and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. Um, I talk about the situation in my family mm -hmm. with uh, the female relative. Uh, okay, so I was pretty much sort of rescued from that because the family went overseas, uh, the family member married, we came back to the United States and that family member was there no more, you know. Uh, uh, so I was pretty much sort of delivered from that. But then I moved to Georgia uh, and I became a member of a church with my family and it happened again. Mm. I, and what brought that back to me was um, when you were talking about, you know, you were like 17 and this older woman says to you, mm -hmm. you know, boy, I can show you something, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, I was about 14 then. Mm. And, well, I'm thinking I'm wearing a badge of honor. I'm gonna just be straight up yeah. with you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, yeah, I got it going on. This this woman, she's 24 years old. Yeah. See, she's interested in me. But years later, you know, through counseling and all that, man, you were just molested again. You know, you, mm -hmm. you were, you know, repeating this pattern. You were repeating this pattern. And so uh, eventually that cycle had to be broken. You know, yeah. something had to give. Uh, and, and, and you know, you talk about my attitude or towards people, towards women. Uh, it poured over into my relationships. Right. It did. I mean, in, in my relationships with women, and it wasn't necessarily that woman. You know, if if I'm dating a, a young lady named Sue, it mm -hmm. wasn't Sue, but it was yeah. the female relative I saw, or I was angry at my mother because I felt that my mother should have done something. You know. And so it did pour over into my situation. Uh, it poured over into my relationships. And eventually I had to take the step, the drastic step 
uh, confronted what had happened to me, and I went into counseling. Well, well let me ask you this. So the instance at the church, this happened in the church, is what you're saying, or it was a woman from the church? Now, this, this happened, um, well, it was a woman from the church, but I mean, yeah, I mean, just like a, a, a choir director, and I was a musician, yeah. And, was there an ever an opportunity where maybe that person was confronted, or was this something you also kind of... I, I got into a situation, uh, uh, and I did talk to the, um, I did talk to the, uh, the bishop, in that regard about it, yeah. I, I did talk to the bishop about it. Uh, I, I don't know that anything was like really done, done. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they swept things under the rug then, you know, uh, so. Uh, you know, because there's a lot that I want to, yeah. um, uh -huh. you know, I want to unpack with well, that. Um, because I think another misunderstanding is that majority of the time when this happens to kids, it's from people that the victim or the family knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know what I'm saying? yeah. See, when we're in the store, we'll, we'll, we'll snatch up our child in the heartbeat mm -hmm. when they're around strangers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But we, we'll let our guard down around everyone else. And and it, it, make, it makes sense why. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand that, okay, this is when it happens. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's the teacher, it's the coach, it's, mm -hmm someone in you know the, the choir director whatever the case yeah. may be you know it's it's family members you know what i'm saying how man i got so many stuff i want to ask how, how did it how was you vulnerable again the second time i understand um they was in the church mm -hmm. but how were you vulnerable again the second time um and you know, a, a lot of people will say, well, the adult should have known better, that that's what they're gonna say. But I sort of looked at it as a rite of passage. Uh, you know, Dexter was talking about like the pat on the back. You know, man, if I can get her, you know, that, that'll be like a star in my crown. And uh, so I'm not gonna say that, you know, well, she should have known better, but I, I did a little prod in that instance. Uh, well, I think as, I think as the child, mm -hmm. I don't think it's appropriate to take the responsibility. Yeah, and I've been told that. You, yeah. You're right. I've been told because, that. I've been told uh, that. Because there is, you know, as a child, you're more likely to be manipulated. Yeah. I, I've been told that. And, and and not only that, because you have been abused beforehand, you're more likely for it to happen again. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. And, and I'd be curious, so after the confrontation took place where, mm -hmm. you, where you let somebody at the church know, mm -hmm. Did you ever encounter this person again? And if so, what was that interaction? Not like? really. Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken with the person since, and I spoke with the person then because I moved away to mm -hmm. North Carolina. I did have a conversation with the person, and the person was like, why did you? Mm -hmm. You know, why did you do this to me? And why did you say this? And why did you say that? Uh, pretty much as if it were in a conversation between two adults, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that let me know, you know, as an adult now, I can see where her mindset was, you know, at that time. Uh, she wasn't only up and up, uh, and in, in, in dealing with the family member, uh, like I said, it was a situation I confronted it all the way around, you know, all in totality I confronted it, and uh, went through extensive therapy, man, and, you know, crying, I'm talking about some, because, you know, I, I put up this image, man, I'm a hog, you know, yeah. I, I done been the dope boy, I done been all that, you know what I'm saying, yeah. I done been all that, and so around hard people, doing the hard things, you know, I done been that, you know what I'm saying, so, when I go in and I confront this issue, uh, it's just like, it wasn't enough Kleenex in the room. I mean, the tears, man, it was just like a, a well. And That's I went so. through extensive counseling, and so I said, okay, I gotta tell my family. I gotta tell my family, you know. I'm 42 years old. Yeah. I said, I gotta tell my family what happened, man. So I, I run into one of my brothers who has a terrible problem with uh, drug addiction right now, you know, just, for the last 20, 25 years, he's just been in and out, in and out, in and out, you know. So I tell him, I said, man, I want to talk to you, you know. And uh, we're talking, and I tell him what happened. My thing was, ain't nobody going to believe me, you know what I mean? He says, I believe you. And I looked up, he said, yeah, she did it to me too, you know. So that sort of um, validated my feelings, you know. Uh, but it took me a while, I'm not going to lie, it took me a while to get over the shame associated with that happening. And I, I and I tell people right to that, like I said, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep it real. Had it been a man that done it to me, I don't know what, what would have happened. You know what I'm saying? 
But being that it was, you know, a female, female relative, you know, uh, had it been a man, I don't know, man. I, I probably would have taken my own life. I'm, I'm just being straight up. I don't know, you know. Uh, but it, it, it took a lot of uh, confrontation. It took a lot of therapy, man. And, uh, you know, it, it wasn't something I could pray away. Yeah. Now, I'd get down on my knees and pray and everything going to be all right. It stuck with me. And still, like, I get, you know, thoughts sometime about, you know, what happened to me and, you know, my past. But now, rather than acting out in anger, it makes me more compassionate uh, in the way I treat people, in the way I, I, I do things with people around me, whether it's male or female, because of my experience. You know, because you, you, you hit on something, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, a lot of times we're stuck in a place where we're traumatized. Mm -hmm. So while we might be, we might progress in age, emotionally we're still kind of stuck in that place. Mm -hmm. You know, so you mentioned that, you know, you would see the, even though it would be Sue, you would see uh, the the person, the victimizer yeah. mm -hmm. in Sue, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, it wasn't until, you know, here you are 42 years old that now you're confronting the issues that happened in the past. Do you, do you think that, uh, do you, were you able to, I guess, since that moment, have that conversation with your mom and maybe hear her side of it and maybe was there something that she said that uh, maybe resonated with you as far as something she could have done back then? Because you, cause you mentioned there was this inability mm -hmm. to talk to your mom, you know, and I, I can't even imagine what that conversation sounds like from a five or six year old talking about this happened. But, you know, in, in, in hindsight, you know, did she offer something that helped you out? Uh, you know, we, we, you know, if you speak to people who have gone through or been traumatized, they can remember specific times and specific dates because, and I can remember having a family meeting and I can tell you exactly when it was Whenever uh, Pastor Zachary Timms was found dead in the hotel, yeah. that was like during that week, that weekend I called a family meeting. So I think that was 2012 or something like that. And I told my mom, I said, I want to sit down and talk. And, uh, Recently? Yeah, 2012. Uh, my mother, uh, she's there. Uh, she invites my brother and she invites the female relative over. And uh, we're sitting down and uh, my mom says, uh, Mark, he said, you want to talk? Uh, this is something you've been wanting to get off your chest. Speak. And I said what was on my mind. I told her, I said, this is what you did to me. This is what it made me feel like. I said, and because of this, I, I made some grave mistakes in life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I talked five or ten minutes. And uh, so the female relative says, uh, and, and, and if you want to see me get angry right now, Minimize sexual abuse. Yeah. Uh, I was at a dinner the other night, Dex, and somebody was talking about a situation. And uh, it was almost like, you know, protect the adult, forget the kid. I had to leave. I bet. That's how angry I got, man. I had to leave. And so uh, I'm sitting in there, I'm talking to my family, and uh, the female relative tried to minimize. You know, well, I, I didn't know that, you know, I was doing this. I didn't know that I was doing that. When I call you in to put lotion on my back, you know, I just thought you were just putting, you know, just crazy stuff, man. You know, just, and it, it just was like taking me back, crucifying me again, so to speak, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my mother's defense was this, you know, I didn't know, you know, you know, I mean, she didn't, yeah. you know, and I'd just been brainwashed into not talking or not telling, you know, what goes in this house stays in this house. So my mother, you know, she didn't know. Uh, and, that's all that, you know, that's the only explanation that she's ever given. You know, she just didn't know. Uh, today, you know, we, we say we're family. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, you know, people talk about where well, you forgive and you move on. That's hard, man. You know, you, God has to do it through me because if it were left up to me, you know, I, I'd probably do some serious damage. You know what I mean? So where I know that growth is taking place and I, I didn't listen to somebody telling me that you got to, you ought to. It was in my time. Yeah. The relative called the other day. And uh, I'm usually like just like quick. You know, I mean, I may not stay on the phone a minute, 30 seconds. But the relative said the other day, uh, we were talking about my mother was um, 
she had flown out of town, you mm-hmm. know, so she was concerned about my mother, and my mother's, you know, well-being. And so at the end of the conversation, she said, I love you. And for the first time, man, it's been some years. I said to her, I said, I love you. So I know that the forgiveness yeah. has finally taken, but it had to be in my time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't do it because people in the church were telling me, mm-hmm. this is what you need to do. But I mean, just last week I was driving down Broad Street because my mother was out of town and the relative called me and asked about my mother. Yeah. And she ended a phone call like that and I said to her back, yeah. I love you. So I know that the forgiveness is genuine. I mean, that is it's huge when well, you, you yeah. took the steps. Jeez. Um, yeah. You took the steps to yeah. seek counseling, to set up a meeting, yeah. and even continue answering the phone calls. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You hear yeah. what I'm saying? That, that's, that's a lot. Uh, but I think the big thing that I don't want people to miss is you said on my time. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I think sometimes we get, and we, and we, and we discuss this, and uh, when, I don't think me and Dex, well, it's, it's, it's where a lot of these videos, mm. we never know how heavy it's going to actually yeah. be. Yeah. Mm. And that, that forgiveness video, that was, I mean, that, that was very, very heavy. We was really mm. feeling it from other people and even within ourselves. But we kind of have um, almost a, a shifty um, idea about forgiveness. Mm. And it beats ourselves up. We'll beat ourselves up because we just gotta forgive. We gotta forgive. Mm, we gotta yeah, forgive. Man, yeah. But it's it's a process. Yeah. And we don't. We just wanna. We just look at every wound as just black and white. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And there's just some wounds where it just take a lot longer. Yeah. And you just can't expect me to forget. Yeah, you go. You yeah. just can't. You just can't expect me just to continue just walking the same way I was always walking. It just doesn't work like that. So I, I'm glad you, you took time out to share that because that's that's real big. Yeah. Man, I, I'm telling you, man, I, I, I appreciate your transparency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, because I know it takes a lot of courage, man, to one just kind of open yourself up to the world, you know. But but it's necessary, you know. You know, uh, e- even though you went through it, you know, and and you might question why you had to go through it. Uh, you know, it's my hope and belief that somebody will will hear this and it'll help them out. You know, because yeah. at the end of the day, you 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 literally just trapped a like almost a, like I said, almost a fifty year process. You know, and you know, at the end of the day, you know, people on the outside looking in, you know, they'll say, "Well, just forgive," but but you don't know. You know, you don't know what this created in me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's this, it, this, yeah. this became a, a a crutch, you know, at, at the end of the day, the fact that you were offended, now, in, in a weird way, it became like a badge of honor, you know what I'm saying? It, it became, you know, the thing you were into, you know, but then you, you got to look back on the hurt, you know, and, and now it's bringing up thoughts of, you know, I was unable to talk to my family members and I couldn't confide in my mom. And here I am a grown man and I, I'm apprehensive about talking to my brother because I don't even think he'll believe me mm-hmm. only to find out that he went through it, too. Yeah. You know, and so you know, I can only imagine that this probably stirred up some more, you know, uh, bitterness, you know. But the reality is, is that you got the help that you needed. And throughout the course of time, you know, you were able to kind of start opening yourself back up to this person and have this dialogue. You know, one of the things I share with people all the time, uh, they talk about time heals all wounds, you know, and and I don't believe that, you know. Uh, I believe it's the process over a course of time that heals wounds, you know. Uh, If you have an open fracture, and you don't do anything about it, two weeks later, it's, it's probably going to be worse off. It's going to be infected and it's going to be all this other stuff. But if you get it set, then two weeks later, you know, it'll be further along in the healing process. And so you had to have a process of healing for yourself. And man, I, I just, you know, really appreciate, you know, your yeah. willingness to come on here, you know, because uh, I know that this is a, is a difficult subject matter. You know, a lot of times it's easy to to talk about stuff that you haven't experienced as an expert, but to really talk about your own experiences and to be vulnerable is huge. So thank you. 
Yeah, man. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, uh, I asked to be here. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I've spoken to to groups in yeah. this regard, man. I, I've spoken in prisons. I've spoken at you know men's conferences. Yeah. You know, in this regard, and I can remember uh, when I knew that I was really, you know, empowering others. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just about me, man. I remember speaking in a prison, and when I got through, I'm talking about rapists, murderers, robbers, and everybody were coming up to me. I said, Mark, thanks, man. He says, now I know that. In some of the stories, Dex, mm -hmm. some of the stories, Dominique. Now I know that what my grandmother was doing to me in the bed was wrong. Or now I know what the babysitter was doing to me, man. That was unacceptable. I mean, these guys were just opening up. I mean, they were just giving some stories that would blow your mind, man. And so uh, I thank God now that I'm part of the, the healing process for others as well. Yeah. And a part of the solution, you know. And uh, I'm thankful for that, man. Yeah, we, we really appreciate you again. And I want to end off on these few points that I really want people to really not forget is how young it happened to you, yeah. you get what I'm saying, um, and that it started off with a young relative, um, and, and then the second time it happened with someone within the church, mm -hmm. and I really want people to really grasp that because we, we're still missing that we have to, as parents, we have to really just be aware. Um, and and another thing is, we did you didn't have that conversation, and that conversation is so important to have at such a young age because it really helps us understand how do I respond to this, how do I even react to this. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And 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 hopefully parents can say, you know what, this is a conversation. If I haven't had it already, I need to have it right there now. You, go. you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm really encouraging parents to really take that time out have that conversation and, and just make it plain to them. Um, no matter how young they are, make it plain to them and just be aware. Because if 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 we're not aware, we're just gonna continue allowing our boys and girls to be vulnerable in these situations. So, um, Dex, you want to hit on anything else? No, nah, that's, you know, once again, you know, man, I just really appreciate your willingness to open up. You know, one of the things that Dominique and I uh, wanted to do when we created this platform was create a space where uh, men can be vulnerable, men can be transparent, man, and, and you did exactly that, man. So uh, thank you. Thank so you, guys, we, man. Thank you, man. So we really appreciate everyone for tuning in with us. Uh, this is When Men Open Up, a show where we are redefining manhood through transparency. And if you have any insight, any any anything you want to share with us, any comments, please comment, please inbox us please dm us please email us at um info at womenopenup.com info at womenopenup.com visit womenopenup.com as well my name is dominique bond and i'm dexter Peggers. and thank you mark jenkins again for joining us we are out thank you so much for joining us